Things are going to get loud. Howdy, I'm Matt, and in this episode we are going to be taking a closer look at the obnoxious Maytech buzzer for your flight controller or maybe as a potential lost model alarm. Now in the pack you receive the buzzer itself, now you'll see, let me unplug this one, uh, and some pin headers which you will be required to solder up. Uh, it's very, very simple to do. In fact, it took longer for the soldering iron to heat up than the time it took me just to pop those pin headers on there. You don't need to run the pin headers if you don't want to, uh, there you can solder direct to the board. Now there is an oddity with this buzzer and I will wire this up and I will show you how obnoxiously loud it is uh, in a few moments time which is let's be fair what you want from a loud buzzer alarm it is and I am going to plug this in so apologies for the horrific noise which I'm, I'm no actually I'm not apologizing for it that's the reason why we got a lost model alarm in it and why we've got this beeper connected up so let's go that's what it sounds like. The best way, it is obnoxious. There's no other way of describing it. So let's move that out of the way because it's ruining the light here and get ourselves zoomed right in. Uh, you will see from the form, from its form factor, it is absolutely tiny. This is one centimeter squares. So I would say that we are literally 18 millimeters long by maybe uh, 12 or 13 millimeters square and depth wise it's not a lot we'll say a centimeter or 10 millimeters and that's fantastic of course because this isn't going to take up much room within your model uh, especially if you're running a much smaller model maybe like the dark 250 which we'll see in a few moments time and also the weight on this is an absolute joke uh, i could put it on the scales but it would probably say three grams i'll put the specification uh, up on the screen for you it really does not weigh anything at all now when it comes to the wiring of this device, you need to go really, really careful. So I'll put this on the right hand side and I'll put the wiring diagram up on the left hand side. So uh, we'll start with the, the obvious, five volts and ground. Now you may be thinking, well that's fine Matt, it's five volts and ground, what could be wrong here? The issue is, is that when you connect this up to a typical flight controller, even Maytek's own flight controller, which we will be doing in a moment, is that the pinout, turn this around, which is, this is the F411WSE, is ground, five volts, and then B minus. So if we look at the pins on here, we have five volts and then ground. So you'll notice that the wiring on this cable I've had to twist the cables over, take one out and re uh, replace it. You need to go really careful with the Make Tech kit. They are renowned for reversing polarities on different things, and this is no exception. So with that in mind, the way you, you would connect this buzzer up to a Maytec 411 WSE flight controller is the five volts ground and then B minus. Now, how do you know it's B minus? Is that your flight controller would tell you. So that pin just there, uh, and in fact I'll move that to the right hand side uh, and I'll put it up on the screen and again this is where you need to check your pinouts for your flight controller is that it tells me that pin there is B minus so I have ground 5 volts and then B minus uh, so that's what I have coming on this end of the servo so I would plug that in like so there we go so that's how it would connect to the flight controller however up at this end it needs to go like that and the pin order has changed so I need 5 volts ground and then B minus or buzzer minus and then that's how I would then or you would then connect it to your flight controller. Now with that said let's go and get this connected to, to a model and I'll prove to you how obnoxious this is and there's also one other thing which I want to show you uh, now this I'll show you in iNav but also this applies to beta flight as well you can connect this up so you can have a switch on your transmitter and to make this beep really really simple uh, and it's just a great way of using it as a lost model alarm also it's worth noting is that if you do connect a buzzer to your flight controller it will chirp to you in both beta flight and inav to let you know 
the, as all the audio confirmations of things. For example, using the stick commands to load up a waypoint mission, for example, or save in settings, uh, as another example. So, oh, by the way, if you don't know about the stick commands within iNav or Beta Flight, don't worry, I've got another video coming up on that very soon, so don't forget to press the subscribe button because that is one of the next videos coming out. Anyway, get back onto the topic. This thing, absolutely obnoxious. Do you want to hear how obnoxious it is? And remember, this is a good thing. Keep that in the back of your mind. Are you ready for this? I, 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 it, here in real life, things are going to get loud. That's the flight controller telling us that it's not labelled, level, and we also don't have a satellite lock. It will chirp its living daylights out of you. You're having me raising my voice. Uh, I wonder if I can... Hang on. Point made. That's why you have a buzzer attached to your model. Imagine that obnoxious noise in the middle of this field uh, and that was real life. That happened to me just a couple of days ago uh, and thank goodness for having the buzzer in the model uh, because frankly without this I would not have found it. Uh, so yes, the Maytech buzzer absolutely obnoxious and absolutely cool all in the same hand and let me show you how to set up a switch on your transmitter so you can go or flaps in this case but on a serious point where you can use a switch on your transmitter so that you can turn this buzzer on when you've lost your model uh, maybe you've dropped it into a field of crops for example and you want to find it or you've just landed in the field you were flying with but the grass is a bit long and you want to walk straight to it instead of twiddling the sticks away trying to hear the servos just click the switch on your transmitter and you can walk straight to it this thing is ridiculously loud uh, i literally heard it halfway across a field easily so that's why we like these little buzzers so with that said let's jump across to the desktop and i'll walk you through the setup it is super super simple to do i missed this out a few moments ago you will notice that the buzzer unit itself has multiple pins on it in fact i'll put it that way around and i'll put a nice screenshot on that side of the screen for you when we first looked at this just a few moments ago, I mentioned about the 5 volts ground and then B minus and being very careful of the wiring of this device to your flight controller. But you may be wondering, well Matt, I don't have a flight controller, how can I connect this to my model? Well this end pin here is auxiliary and what you can do if you've got a spare channel on your receiver is connect that up to a PWM pin and then when you put your, let me just turn that off so it doesn't talk to us, so when you put a switch high is that then this will trigger your lost model alarm. So uh, you can use this with a flight controller if you want to, or without a flight controller also if you want to, and you can do that on an auxiliary pin on here. Now also, there's a hybrid of this as well, which is that you could use this, and don't use B minus, so you don't get the notifications from your flight controller. Instead, what you can do, and this would be my recommendation, is that if you have a spare channel out on your flight controller, so in this instance, I'm only actually using two of the servo outputs from the Matec F11 flight controller, is that what I could do is connect up one of these to the auxiliary pin and then map a switch to trigger that channel to go high within my mixer and then that would then set the buzzer off and then you can use it as a pure lost model alarm rather than having the extra beeps which come with the flight controller so you would and by the way you would do that within your mixer uh, and not via the modes tab which we would have taken a look at either now or in a few moments time anyway let's cut back to the video just wanted to make the point you can use this both ways with a flight controller or without a flight controller and you could use it with a flight controller but indirectly by using a spare servo output i hope that makes sense so we're over on the desktop now and I'm using iNav, but keep in the back of your mind, it's a very similar process within Betaflight 2. So obviously I've been and connected the buzzer, well, I've got to be honest, well, it is here connected, but it won't be powered because I've not put the battery on, so it's not here screaming at us, <laughs> okay, is that if you go to the modes tab on the left-hand side, and we're going to scroll down, 
uh, and we are looking for the beeper option. So it's telling us, and you, yours may be blank, so what will be channel eight and high? So let me get rid of that. So yours may look like this, completely blanked out. So we would do add range, and then we'll choose our channel, which was eight. Uh, and I only want that to happen when we are high, which is, Camera on. ah, right now. Claps. There we go. So when I move a switch or your chosen switch from your channel uh, to high, and of course it could be low or anywhere in range in there, is that's when the beeper is going to kick off. And of course you would then hit save. And I am going to plug this in. So apologies for the horrific noise, which I'm, I'm no, actually I'm not apologizing for it. That's the reason why we got a lost model alarm in it and why we've got this beeper connected up. So let's go. That's what it sounds like when that beep, 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 beep. Oh. It's complaining about something else within it, I know. But that's what it sounds like when you have the lost, lost mono alarm on there. Oh, it is ridiculously loud. So can you understand why I like it now? Oh, goodness knows how that came out on the microphone. It was ear piercing, uh, this side. Now, actually, before we go, I just want to show you the outputs tab. Was it the outputs tab? No, it was the mixer tab. My bad. Is that if you have a spare servo output like I do within my flight controller, so maybe you're flying a flying wing uh, and you're only using two servo outputs, maybe you've got an additional one or two, is that what you could do is add in a new mixer rule and we'll change that to servo five uh, and then maybe you wanted rc channel eight to be the switch uh, and then what you can then do is that what the mixer will do is now pass through channel eight to s5 which was the s5 on my flight controller so when i change my channel eight uh, which was that switch which we saw a few moments ago is that we could then connect that up using the auxiliary uh, pin on the buzzer and then that's how we would get it to beep on our flight controller in fact I think that's exactly what I'm going to go and do with mine right now so I'm going to go and hit save and reboot uh, and then that's where I'm going to connect the buzzer up on mine because having it on all the time is really frustrating <laughs> to begin with uh, so I'm going to go and set mine up on that switch to be a pass through uh, for channel 8 I hope that makes sense. And by the way, if that isn't right, what I'll do is put a note in the video description to put out the correct steps uh, if that doesn't work. But that should be correct. So in other words, when we go high, we can go up that way. And by the way, you may be wondering, oh, Matt, actually, I want it on the other end of the switch. Well, don't reverse the channel. Just change that to minus 100, and then it'll work in reverse. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, back to the workbench. I'll include a link to this little obnoxious buzzer over on Banggood. If you use that link, you will be supporting this channel. Remember, that's something which I always like to be 100% open and clear about. So with that said, so as we've been in scene, this little thing is completely obnoxious. I think that's the best label for a device like this. Uh, they are louder than the other ones which you can buy by a country mile. Super impressed with it, and I've got these in multiple models which I own for reasons like that field which we saw earlier. So with that said, for myself, Matt, if you're new here, by the way, I'm Matt, welcome aboard. Don't forget to press the red subscribe button, and of course, press press the bell notification so that YouTube updates you when the next video is out. We could be taking a look at a device like this, maybe a flight controller, or perhaps dispatching some foam. Cut to the clip. <laughs> but in all seriousness, from myself, Matt, a big thank you to you for taking the time to join me here at the workbench, and I'll see you again shortly. Cheerios!